Hi, I welcome you all to very interesting session congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So the congenital adrenal hyperplasia, hyperplasia which means gland enlargement. So you can see enlarged gland on the top of a kidney. Why? Keep that question in your mind. So this is the worksheet. At the end of the session, you will be able to answer all the questions in this worksheet. Okay, so this congenital adrenal hyperplasia or autosomal recessive disorders because you know most of the enzyme disorders are autosomal recessive because uh, if you receive a gene from father and also the other gene from mother, if either one of a gene is defective, the other gene can manage. If both the gene copies are defective, it results in autosomal recessive disorders. In contrast with autosomal dominant, you know, if any one of a gene is defective, the patient will be having disease. That is autosomal dominant disorder. We can see that in genetic sessions. Okay, first of all, there is enlargement of a gland, enlargement of adrenal glands. Why? Because of a hormone, ACTH. ACTH, that is released from anterior pituitary. ACTH. So this adrenocorticotrophic hormone that increases that result in bilateral note that very important bilateral adrenal hyperplasia and hyperpigmentation I will explain you in a while and why the ACTH hormone is increased so I said ACTH hormone is increased that results in congenital adrenal hyperplasia why the ACTH is increased because of these enzyme deficiencies i will explain everything now okay in the previous class we had discussed about the hypothalamo anterior pituitary and adrenal axis so the hypothalamo which releases corticotrophin releasing hormone that stimulates anterior pituitary cells to release adrenocorticotrophic hormone and this acts on the adrenal glands to release more cortisol when compared with aldosterone adrenal androgens more cortisol and this gives feedback mechanism to anterior pituitary as well as to your hypothalamus that is a negative feedback mechanism okay now i said there is increased ACTH why there is increased ACTH? Because there is decreased cortisol. Because of decreased cortisol, note that. Because of decreased cortisol, there is increased ACTH. So, there is increase in ACTH as well as corticotrophin releasing hormone. Because of decreased cortisol. Now, the question. Why the cortisol should be decreased? So, there are so many enzymes we discussed in the cortex of adrenal gland that is responsible for the secretion of cortisol. Am I right? What happens if these enzymes are defective that results in decreased cortisol that increases your ACTH results in adrenal gland hyperplasia? Clear? Very interesting, right? Okay, we'll move on. In the previous class, we have discussed how the aldosterone cortisol and adrenal androgens are produced from cholesterol. I'm going to summarize that for you here. So cholesterol is converted to pregnenolone with the help of enzyme desmolase. This pregnenolone through a series of steps converted to aldosterone. And what is the important enzyme you need to remember here? 21 beta hydroxylase and 11 beta hydroxylase. Okay, this pregnenolone is converted to a series of steps to cortisol with the help of enzyme 17 alpha hydroxylase. Good. And also 21 beta hydroxylase, 11 beta hydroxylase. And now again with the help of enzyme through a series of steps you get DHEA and androstenedione. These are the adrenal antigens. What is the enzyme here? 1720 lyase. 
okay i let everything and now what is the intermediate here i'm going to write that intermediate because that is important for diagnosis 11 deoxy corticosterone and this is the superficial layer glomerulosa this is from fasciculata this is from reticularis i hope you are very clear with this chart because once you understand this chart very clearly then it is very easy to do okay first we'll understand what happens if there is 21 beta hydroxylase deficiency 21 beta hydroxylase deficiency so what is happening here there is decreased aldosterone because of a lack of this enzyme and also decreased cortisol okay now you have to understand this decreased cortisol stimulates ACTH secretion from anterior pituitary so there is increased ACTH secretion so this ACTH acts on this enzyme and stimulates it the ACTH stimulates your desmolase enzyme so that more and more cholesterol is converted to pregnenolone since 21 beta hydroxys enzyme is deficient this pregnenolone is converted to more adrenal androgens clear so you have to understand in 21 beta hydroxylase deficiency there is deficient cortisol deficient aldosterone production but there is increased androgens in the body okay we'll discuss about the clinical features later now this increased ACTH is responsible for bilateral adrenal hyperplasia clear okay now we'll, we'll see about 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency okay you can understand that cortisol is deficient cortisol is deficient as well as your androgens are deficient so if your cortisol is deficient your ACTH increases that stimulates your desmolase enzyme that increases the production of aldosterone so in this patient with 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency you can see increased aldosterone that is increased mineralocorticoids so what are the actions of aldosterone sodium reabsorption increases followed by water reabsorption and potassium secretion increases so there is a huge electrolyte disturbance in our body okay what is the third enzyme deficient we are going to discuss 11 beta hydroxylase so 11 beta hydroxylase enzyme is deficient in some patients 11 beta hydroxylase so there is decreased aldosterone cortisol that is easily understood now due to decreased cortisol ACTH increases that results in bilateral adrenal hyperplasia that stimulates your desmolase enzyme and increases your 11 deoxycorticosterone very important to understand this weak mineralocorticoid this weak mineralocorticoid increases because you have still 21 beta hydroxylase enzyme is present so your 11 deoxycortisone which is weak mineralocorticoid increases and also your androgens get increased so although the aldosterone is decreased but you don't see the lab findings like in 21 beta hydroxylase deficiency i'll explain that once you understand this chart it's going to be very easy to understand the worksheet okay have this flow chart in your hand we are going to do some workouts okay so we have seen these three enzyme deficiencies where is the primary disturbance here in the glucocorticoids in cortisol you have low cortisol in all the three cases what happened to mineralocorticoids as you already seen in 21 beta and 11 beta we have low aldosterone also note that very important you have increased deoxycorticosterone it is weak mineralocorticoid that can do the same action as that of aldosterone but it has got weak activity note that very important the 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency you have increased mineralocorticoid and also what happened to adrenal androgens decreased 
adenyl androgens because you have 17 alpha hydroxylase deficient you have both the cortisol adenyl androgens become deficient with the increase in aldosterone we have already seen that okay what happens to the adrenal androgens in 21 beta and 11 beta it increases in both the cases note that very important increases in both the cases so regarding adrenal androgens you have decreased adrenal androgens so in the labs if you find the androstein dione you know you have decreased androstein dione here okay so regarding blood pressure and the potassium you have to understand the functions of the aldosterone if you have increased aldosterone there is increased sodium and water reabsorption that results in increased blood pressure and what happens if there is decreased aldosterone decreased blood pressure decreased aldosterone do you see decreased blood pressure here no note that you have deoxycorticosterone so you will have increased blood pressure what happens to potassium recall the functions of aldosterone potassium secretions so you have low potassium here and high potassium here and low potassium here why because of deoxycorticosterone activity and regarding labs we have seen androstenedione decrease because of decreased androgens in 21 beta and 11 beta the very important differentiating point is renin renin why because you have decreased aldosterone here you have increased renin due to feedback activity decreased aldosterone but increased deoxycorticosterone so there is low renin activity here note that the renin activity uh, is a very good differentiating lab findings in 21 beta and 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency okay in clinical presentation take male and female because of decreased androgens decreased androgens the male you can see ambiguous genitalia recall that what is the function of androgen very important development of external genitals development of external genitals so what happens if there is decreased androgens the male babies will be very different difficult to differentiate with from the female babies so you have to do some chromosomal studies to find whether it's a male or female baby okay and you can also see undescended testis the same reason decreased androgen and because of decreased androgen the females you can see the lack of secondary sexual characters for example development of hair in the pubic uh, axillary etc okay now coming on to a 21 beta hydroxylase 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency now there is increased androgens note that there is increased androgens am i right so you can see precocious puberty because of increased androgens and in the female you can see virilization virilization means development of hair in the pubic or axillary areas and here also you can see the virilization because of decreased aldosterone you can have low sodium in the blood that is called salt wasting you can see salt wasting in the infants okay i hope you are very clear in this chart so if you get any confusion first see the glucocorticoids glucocorticoids always decreased in all the cases and regarding adrenal androgens you get increased adrenal androgens in 21 beta and 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency and note that in 21 beta and 11 beta hydroxylase in 11 beta you have weak mineralocorticoid activity so you don't see the decreased activity of aldosterone here in 11 beta okay now my question to you i said if there is increased acth you can see hyperpigmentation hyperpigmentation why okay leave that in comment section i will get back to you a little recall so 21 beta hydroxylase deficiency or 17 alpha or 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency this results in low cortisol that results in increased acth because of a feedback mechanism this acth can increase the size of a gland this we call congenital adrenal hyperplasia 
okay in the next videos we can uh, see some ecg lectures and if you want to follow med manners here is a link thank you see you with more interesting videos